Earlier this year, I had the pleasure of visiting my friends at the Cody Firearms Museum, and while having a look through their extensive collection, we came across a really interesting rifle. The rifle isn't currently on display, and was safely tucked away in one of the museum's vaults. When we began looking through the vault's racks, we came across what we initially thought were a number of John Browning prototypes, from his work with the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. One of the prototypes immediately caught our eye, as it had a T-shaped charging handle, something which is now synonymous with the AR-15 M16 platform. In the past, I've had the pleasure of examining over a dozen of John Browning's prototypes. Some videos are already published on the channel, others will be published in the future, so stay tuned. This rifle, however, isn't a Browning, it's a Mason. William Mason is probably best known as the man behind the Colt Single Action Army, the Model 1877, and what would become the Model 1889. But in 1882, Mason left Colt and joined Winchester. While originally he was recruited to work on revolvers for Winchester, that's a topic for another day, he became Winchester's master mechanic and was responsible for bringing many of John Browning's designs to production. Following the Browning's schism with Winchester in 1903, the company continued to develop their own designs, and a number of these came from Mason. The rifle's patent was filed in March 1905, and was granted on the 12th of March 1907 as number 846591. It's a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle which feeds from a conventional tube magazine, but it does have a number of quite interesting features. Let's take a look. First up, the action. Mason, in his patent for the rifle, describes the weapon's action as an automatic balanced breech block gun, by which he means what we now know today as a blowback. He describes this as a breech block which is not positively locked in its closed and recoil taking position, but weighted with a reference to the energy developed by the explosion of the cartridge to be used in the gun, so that its inertia takes the initial shock of recoil. The only marking visible on the firearm is on the top of the receiver, with a number marking 7295. The rifle also has a trigger locking safety located in the front of the trigger guard. The patent describes this as providing the gun with a safety in the form of a lever suspended by its upper end from a pivot in the lower tang and having its lower end entered into a slot in the forward reach of the trigger guard, which is part of the said lower tang. The said lever is formed with a stop shoulder co-acting with a stop finger at the forward end of the trigger. When the safety is pushed rearward, its shoulder is moved under the finger, whereby the trigger is locked against operation under any circumstances. The rifle has a swinging carrier which, when the breech block cycles, acts on what Mason calls the carrier arm, via a cam which moves the arm up and down, allowing a round to move into the action from the tube magazine, when the bolt has been sufficiently moved to the rear. The rifle's tube magazine is loaded by pushing the carrier up and thumbing cartridges into the magazine. Another intriguing feature of the rifle's action is a set of rollers located in the top of the breech block which prevent friction from the block against the receiver. The rollers also act as a lever which is under spring tension which returns the breech block forward. Mason used this in place of a more conventional return spring assembly. Instead, the lever is acted on by a flat spring, which Mason felt allowed him to secure a marked economy of space inside the receiver, not requiring a coil spring and the space needed to compress it. Additionally, at the rear of the receiver, there is also a buffer made from what the pattern describes as vulcanized fiber. Vulcanization is a process which strengthens and improves the durability of materials. As we didn't fully disassemble the rifle, we can't confirm the buffer's presence in the prototype. On examining the rifle, I was a bit perplexed by what appeared to be a smaller hole opposite the ejection port. On reading Mason's patent, it became clear that this was actually an emergency gas port to allow gas to escape from the receiver in the event of a major failure. Mason explains this as, The gas escape opening is so constructed and arranged with reference to the construction and arrangement of the breech block that it permits the escape of gas through it when the breech block is in the closed position so that in case there should be a leakage of gas due, for instance, to the splitting of the head of a cartridge, the gas will work back and escape the said opening without damage to the gun. Whereas in the absence of such a gas escape opening, the breech block might be broken or deformed by the force of the gas, bending it from left to right toward the ejection opening. Now onto the most interesting feature, the charging handle. 
Could this be the first rifle with a T-shaped charging handle? The pattern describes it as the breech block handle arranged transversely with respect to the top of the gun frame and in length exceeding the width thereof. The ends of this handle are formed with finger cuts, flanked at their forward ends by ears and at their rear ends by knurled or roughened fingers, extending outwardly beyond the planes of the side walls of the frame, so as to be readily engaged by the finger and thumb respectively. The said handle is also formed with a centrally arranged screw hole, receiving a screw entering a screw hole in the forward end of the longitudinally reciprocating non-rotatable balanced breech block. I can say that patterns from this period don't make easy reading. All in all, it's a really interesting patent and well worth a read. You can find a link to the patent in the accompanying article for this video over at armorersbench.com. Despite the prototype's interesting design, it never made it into production. In 1903, Winchester had introduced the Model 1903, a tube magazine blowback rifle chambered in 22 Winchester automatic. The 1903 was a design by another of Winchester's engineers, T.C. Johnson, and instead of a T-shaped charger, used a plunger, which I think is probably a little bit less elegant. But the Model 1903 was a success, remaining in production for decades, so it seems that Mason's design wasn't needed. As a result, it would be another 60 years before a rifle using a T-shaped charging handle became popular in the US. Mason continued to work for Winchester until his death in July 1919, aged 76. Massive thanks to my good friends at the Cody Firearms Museum for allowing me to examine this rifle, and thank you to my friend Tyler Berger for his help filming the video. Please do check out the museum online at centreofthewest.org. And if you find yourself in Wyoming or heading towards Yellowstone, then definitely make sure that you visit one of the best publicly displayed collections of firearms in the world. Thank you for watching. If you found this interesting, please do share it with friends. It was nice to get back to doing some more historical content, which has taken a little bit of a backseat while covering a lot of the Ukraine conflict material. Sharing this video around would really help, as these videos tend to struggle with the algorithm. If you'd like to, you can support us via Patreon, and you can check out the History of Weapons and War video app. Information about both of those are in the description box below. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next time.